This video will discuss general treatment options for leptomeningeal disease and the systemic cancer from which it originated. Some of these treatments were developed for systemic treatment of cancer, but can breach the blood-brain barrier, or they are being used or trialed specifically for LMD. Information provided on this channel is not intended to be medical advice. You should seek direction from a qualified medical professional. Please see our full medical disclaimer at the end of this video. As a refresher, leptomeningeal disease, or LMD, is a rare complication of cancer in which the cancer cells spread to the membranes surrounding the brain and spinal cord. Please watch our LMD basics video in full for more information. The main types of treatment for LMD are radiation therapy, chemotherapy, or immunotherapies, which do include targeted therapy. While there may be different types of radiations for specific cancer, the radiation generally used to treat LMD is whole brain radiation or stereostatic radiation. These radiate tumors in the brain or spine. I will briefly explain each. Each facility may follow slightly different processes, but the basics of how it is performed is the same. Whole brain radiation therapy is a palliative option for patients with brain metastases or LMD that alleviates symptoms, decreases the use of corticosteroids needed to control tumor-associated edema, and potentially improves overall survival. It has been reported to increase the risk of cognitive decline. Whole brain radiation is administered over several days or weeks in multiple doses or fractions in order to reach a total dose desired. To dose whole brain radiation, they will need to map the location where the beam of radiation will be aimed. To do this, they need to secure placement of the patient's head for each dose. This can be done with a custom fit mask or a chin strap that is secured to a table. Stereostatic radiosurgery, also called stereotactic radiosurgery, or SRS, is a very precise beam of radiation aimed at a specific location within the brain or other area of the body to treat tumors or other disorders. It is not a conventional surgery since it does not make an incision. There are several different types of SRS machines available depending on the location in the body to be treated. Linear accelerator machines use x-rays or photons to treat a precise area in one or several doses. You may have heard of them called by the brand names CyberKnife, XKnife, or TrueBeam, among others. GammaKnife is commonly used on small to medium-sized tumors and abnormalities in the brain. It uses gamma particles and is normally given in one dose, which may lower the risk of side effects. There is also proton beam therapy, which uses streams of protons to kill cancer cells. It can reduce the amount of radiation damage to healthy tissue near the tumor and can be used in various parts of the body. Here is an example of a frame used for gamma knife. The frame attaches to the patient's skull to be used as a guide by doctors to precisely map the path of the beams. The machine then delivers a high dose of radiation with submillimeter accuracy to the intended site. If the LMD has spread to the spine and is restricting the use of a limb or restricting bodily functions, the doctors may recommend spinal radiation. Radiation to the spine can vary depending on the facility and the size and location of the tumor. A link will be included below in the description bar, which explains various options. With any treatment, including radiation, be sure to discuss all risks, concerns, benefits, and what will happen if you do or do not receive radiation. While knowing the answer is scary, you need the information to make an informed decision. Chemotherapy with regard to cancer treatment is the use of drugs to destroy cancer cells, usually by ending the cancer cell's ability to grow and divide. Depending on the cancer and the drug type, it is traditionally given one of three ways, intravenously, orally, or by injection. These methods are for systemic treatment in the body. Chemotherapy given by one of these methods does not penetrate the blood-brain barrier well, thus has a poor effect on cancer cells in the cerebral spinal fluid, or CSF. For chemotherapy to reach the CSF, some facilities will administer it intrathecally through a lumbar puncture or in a myoreservoir. There is some limited success with intrathecal dosing. Intrathecal chemo is dosed over a scheduled number of doses over a period of weeks or months to attempt to control side effects. There are many different types of chemotherapy, however the chemotherapy types used for LMD are limited by toxicity and type of cancer. Chemotherapies can sometimes be used in combination with other drugs. 
Immunotherapy is a type of therapy that uses substances to stimulate or suppress the immune system, which help the body fight cancer or an infection or other diseases. Immunotherapy for cancer treatment tends to ramp up the immune system. Some types of cancer immunotherapies only target certain cells, proteins, or mutations within the cancer cell. Others affect the immune system in a more general way. Each can impact LMD differently. Types of immunotherapy include targeted therapy, checkpoint inhibitors, antioangiogenesis therapy, and adoptive cell therapy, which includes CAR T and TIL therapies. I will briefly explain some immunotherapies here and give a few examples. Some immunotherapies have the ability to breach the blood-brain barrier. Targeted therapy are drugs that interfere with specific molecules needed for tumor growth. The most successful targeted therapies target specific proteins or enzymes in the cancer cell. These proteins or enzymes are due to a mutation or alteration not found in healthy cells. This allows the immune system the opportunity to destroy those cancer cells. Some targeted therapies have a significantly greater success at breaching the blood-brain barrier than other drugs and can stabilize or regress LMD for short periods of time. Unfortunately, the cancer cells can learn to mutate around the therapy, making it ineffective within months. Here are a few targeted therapies on the market. Tegriso, FDA approved for the T790M mutation within the EGFR gene for non-small cell lung cancer patients. It has been shown some success even for those without that mutation. Taff and Lauren Mechanist were approved for combination in 2014 for metastatic melanoma patients. Since then, a newer combo of Braftovi and Mectovi have been approved in 2018. Herceptin was FDA approved in 1998 for the HER2 positive breast cancer gene targeting the HER2 gene mutation. Another immunotherapy is a checkpoint inhibitor. It works by releasing the brakes on the immune system so it can destroy cancer cells. Once the immune system is able to find and respond to the cancer, it can stop or slow cancer growth. Often checkpoint inhibitors have been approved for use in more than one cancer type. The following are examples of immune checkpoint inhibitors. Checkpoint inhibitors are dosed by IV, but don't necessarily breach the blood-brain barrier well. As such, there are clinical trials ongoing to establish if they can breach that barrier and how well. Other clinical trials are dosing the drugs directly into the CSF by lumbar puncture or Omaya Reservoir. Two other immunotherapies are antiangiogenesis and hormone therapies. Antiangiogenesis therapy is focused on stopping angiogenesis, which is the process of making new blood vessels. Because a tumor needs the nutrients delivered by blood vessels to grow and spread, the goal of antiangiogenesis therapies is to starve the tumor. Some of these drugs, though, can be used in treatment for LMD. Some cancers use hormones to grow. Hormonal therapies work to block the use of those hormones to slow or stop the cancer's growth. Some hormonal therapies also may be able to breach the blood-brain barrier and assist with treatment in LMD. One of the newest immunotherapies being developed and trialed is adoptive cell therapy. In this therapy, T cells are usually taken from the patient's own blood or tumor tissue, grown in large numbers in a laboratory, and then given back to the patient to help the immune system fight the cancer. Sometimes the T cells are changed in the laboratory to make them better able to target the patient's cancer cells and kill them. Types of adoptive cell therapy include CAR T cell therapy, TCR, and TIL therapy. Clinical trials are ongoing involving adoptive cell therapies for various cancers, and some are studying the impact on brain metastases and LMD. It's important to remember that not all treatments work for everyone. Ask about all side effects for each treatment, as they can affect each person differently. So how do you know what treatments are right for you? Most importantly, research your cancer and your LMD diagnosis and the treatment options available. Look up clinical trials at clinicaltrials.gov. Once you've researched this information, ask your doctors every question you can think of or seek a second opinion if needed. 
When asking questions about treatments, ask about both the benefits and risks, success rates, and other factors that may predict your outcome. Take someone with you to your appointment to take notes and ask questions or just simply be there for you. Most importantly, if you plan to seek treatment, please do not wait. LMD can progress very quickly and it may take time to get into a new doctor, complete tests, or to start a new treatment. Links to various websites and articles will be listed in the description bar below.